Welcome to the next video in the Robotics 101 series. I am Zain Khan and in this video we are going to use coordinate transformations for robots and we are also going to discuss forward kinematics. So let me draw out a robot real quick. This robot has two rings and an end effector which is a gripper and I am marking the length of the rings as L1 and L2. Now I am drawing a fixed frame at the base of the robot. I am marking as F and I am drawing a moving frame at the end of the end effector. I have drawn this in pink. Now the question is that I am given the position of an object with respect to the end effector frame and I now need to find the position of the same object with respect to the fixed frame or the frame which is fixed to the base of the robot. So the question is how do I go from the small x to the big x? There are a few steps that you need to follow. The first is you need to define and draw the fixed frame and the end effector frame. The second is you need to draw a frame at each of the joints with its x-axis parallel to the next link. And the third is you need to mark out the rotation angles. There are two things that you need to consider. The first is that all the rotation angles have to be in an anti-clockwise direction since anti-clockwise is positive. And the second thing is that the rotation angle is going to be with respect to the previous frame. I have already drawn the fixed frame and the end effector frame. So the first step is done. Moving to the second step, I am drawing the first frame M1. Notice that the x-axis of m1 is parallel to the first link and the theta1 is from the x-axis of the fixed frame to the x-axis of the m1 frame. Then I make the second frame m2. Notice that the x-axis is parallel to the next link a2 and the angle is between the x-axis of m1 and the x-axis of m2 which is marked as theta2. And the theta 3 is between the x-axis of M2 and the x-axis of M3 in an anti-clockwise direction. With this done, now I can write the relationship that is the equation of the big X with respect to the small x just by observing this figure. However, that does require a bit of practice and expertise. So if you are new to this, it would be better if you follow a step-by-step -step process. So the step-by-step -step process is that you write the relationship between one frame with respect to its previous frame and then with that frame with respect to its previous frame and so forth. I'm not going to bore you with all the mathematics. So I'm just going to fast forward with this. If you find this difficult, I would encourage you to watch the last few videos in this video series in which I basically drive how to get to this point. I just want to bring your focus to this last equation. Notice that it is for the frame M1 with respect to the fixed frame F. Since the origins are coincident, so there is no translation involved. It is a case of pure rotation and hence there is no displacement vector D. Moving forward and putting the equations into one another and fast forwarding everything, I get to this equation. The last two terms in this equation gives me the displacement terms. The first term gives me the rotation term where A1 times A2 times A3 is the rotation matrix. And once I multiply the A1 times A2 times A3, I get a 2 by 2 matrix which has cosine of theta1 plus theta2 plus theta3, sine of theta1 plus theta2 plus theta3, minus sine of theta1 plus theta2 plus theta3 and cosine of theta1 plus theta2 plus theta3. The small x is the point which is expressed in the end effector frame and the big x is the same point which is expressed in the fixed frame, the frame which is fixed at the base of the robot. Now I'm going to put forward a question. I would want you to put your thinking cap on and think through it. You might have to pause the video to think hard on this one. So the question is, how do I find the location of the end effector in the fixed frame given the robot parameters? The robot parameters are 
the lengths of the rings which I marked as A1 and A2 and the joint angles theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Just giving you a small hint, you have to use this equation right here. So I would encourage you to pause the video right now, think over it and see if you can figure this out. If you were able to get it, then good job. If you weren't, then don't worry. Let me ask you a simple question. And I think you would be able to answer this after that question. So the question is, what's the position of the end effector in the end effector frame? Of course, it's the origin. So it's zero and X and zero and Y. Let me go up and show you what I mean. Here, I am talking about this point here, which is the origin of the M3 frame. So I use this equation here, the big X equation. And in this equation, I simply substitute the small X as zero and zero. And then I just solve this equation. Remember that I am already given the robot parameters, which are the lengths of the links A1 and A2, as well as the joint angles, theta one, theta two, and theta three. So with all the unknowns known, I just saw this equation and I would get a two vector such as four and five. So the four would represent the X coordinate of the end effector in the fixed frame and the five would represent the Y coordinate of the end effector in the fixed frame. So this is what we call forward kinematics. So forward kinematics is basically given the robot parameters. I have to start from the robot parameters and find out the position and orientation of the end effector. The position of the end effector is the big X and the orientation is found by having a look at the rotation matrix. So in this case, the rotation matrix is A1, A2, A3. If I have a look at A1, A2, A3, I can see that it has the sum of theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. So the orientation of the end effector would be the sum of theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get updated with new videos in this series. And as always, see you in the next video.